Sunday. You know, I, I definitely enjoyed myself. Yeah. We watched it last night. We started at like one in the morning, and it's a really long movie. So we were up super it's late. Yeah, we were up super late watching this stuff. And uh, hey, welcome to Nerd Cyclopedia Nerdendum for Man of Steel. That's right. We're here. We're here to talk about uh, the first of the DC Cinematic Universe movies. And uh, welcome, welcome. Uh, I am Hitch, and I'm joined today by, as always, uh, my partner in crime, DP Brown, and Michael, the man with one name. Who welcome Michael to Nerd Cyclopedia. We're glad to have you. Uh, we could, oh, it's a pleasure to be here. We got literally, guys. We got for you the best guy we could find, and we found him. So <laughs> didn't look too far. That's right. We we didn't cast a wide net. We cast a net. We try. We, the, we did the, ask the a couple people. Fighting. That's right. So welcome to uh, the Nerd Denim for Man of Steel. Uh, and uh, before we get started talking about this particular uh, offering from Zach Snyder and the rest of the uh, Warner Brothers crew, uh, let's have uh, DP Brown take us through. Uh, you know, tell everyone where they can find us, that other housekeeping sort of stuff we like to do. All right, so make sure that you guys are going to NerdCyclopedia.com. You will find all our links to all your favorite social media posts. We are at NerdCyclopedia on Twitter, Facebook, and also on Instagram. Make sure that you are subscribing to our podcast on Spotify, um, also on iHeartRadio. We are on um, YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button and getting hitting in the not- notifications because we are there. Or we will be when you ever, whenever we're on, you'll um, you'll you'll actually see us on. Make sure that you are also leaving us some feedback at nerds at nerdcyclopedia.com. We love getting your feedback. Also, if you are checking out our Carbonite Bounty BS podcast, mm. make sure that you are also um, going on to Facebook getting on to our uh, Facebook group. We got some really live discussions on there. You know, love hearing your comments, love hearing your feedback. And Def, you know, thank you as far as all that. Awesome, awesome, guys. Yep, check it out, check it out. Now, as always, throw us the five-star review. If you don't, we get to give you the business. That's just how it's set up. Love uh, business. Exactly. All right, so this is Man of Steel. And Man of Steel is, as I said, the very first uh, sort of DC Cinematic Universe offering. It's sort of trying to set up this larger universe that Marvel did. You know, uh, me and DP do a lot of do a lot of these shows, so there's a lot of record. We have a lot of tape <laughs> a lot of tape about stuff we think so i'm going to give michael the floor first michael what did you think of the portrayal of superman in this movie like what did you think specifically about how they treated the character of superman in this film well i mean you know going with daniel snyder you know his type of movie you know a movie it's going to be he's going into it <laughs> you, you know it's going to be more of that washington risk is um older <laughs> Right. So this isn't, uh, you know, this isn't your, uh, you know, 1970s Superman right. here. This is uh, going to be a dark, grim take on Superman. I mean, to cast Henry Cavell, first of all, mm. I, I mean, I think he's a, a great Superman and portrayed exactly what Daniel Snyder was going for. So, I mean, as for like the hope, you know, I mean, Superman, that's what it's always about. He's about the hope and the promise of D.C., Mm-hmm. So, I mean, the, the casting of Henry Cavell was was excellent, well played. And, you know, what Daniel Snyder was going for, he got a point. He got his point across to what he was going for it's in the two and a half hour movie. Yes. So Henry Cavill, I think, is a, is an excellent Superman. I, I feel like, you know, if I have any qualms with this movie, they don't start. They don't really relate to him. They're not really involved. No, in me. absolutely not. Uh, yeah, he he, portray- he did. He did great. He wonderful. He's job. got the jaw. That's like half the half the Superman thing is going like. Right, being able to pull right. that pose yeah. off, right? When he when he turns and makes that profile, looks up in the sky. Oh you know? man, yeah, that's that's the thing right there, boy. Yeah. So yeah, especially in this movie. So DP, I've always said that that Zach uh, Zach Snyder makes uh, really awesome music videos. So what <laughs> what would you say is the most awesome music video thing in this movie? What would your number one like like Zach <laughs> Zach over over the top music video moment be in this? Uh, probably the, the whole fight scene, you know, the, the, um, the Smallville, you know, fight scene okay. and, and then culminating in like the whole Metropolis fight scene. 
uh, it was a lot of a lot of activity going on, to say the least. You know, some some places where you thought it should end, and all of a sudden it just kept going. You know, um, that's they, they that's, covered that's, a lot of area. Yeah, that's yeah. right. They, oh, oh, they cover a, and destroyed a lot of areas too. You know, at the same time. So, like Smallville's yeah. not a you know not a suburb of Metropolis. Yeah, they don't call oh, it they no. don't call it Bigville. You know what I mean? It's not exactly no. yeah. like the scale there. Uh, not, super not big. At all. One headlight or one uh, one stoplight. That's how Smallville is. Uh, <laughs> so the 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 this this epic clash. It's like a Dragon Ball Z fight, pretty much, right? They're just they might as well power up for forty five minutes. Uh, <laughs> where I want to start talking where the movie starts, and that is on Krypton. And this is this movie has this in, incredibly like it, it's it's a it's a shockingly detailed Krypton with yes. so yeah. much like like extra depth one of the things about the superman origin story if you ever just get bored and read action comics number one because it doesn't take that long to do is that they're very vague <laughs> right they don't they don't have all this you know um they don't have all this specificity it just says his planet blew up and he left and that's pretty much yep. what it says <laughs> so to have this this movie start out and to have superman's dad be russell crowe of all people is so is such an interesting choice and it really in my opinion you know i'm i'm looking at this in 2013 and my reaction to this kryptonian scene is so different now than it was when i came out the first time because when i came out i kept thinking yes. to myself who the heck would be like <laughs> the planet's not going to explode keep <laughs> keep mining the core and when this came out like you know 8 years ago i was like ah no one would ever do that and now I I tell you what they've made me a believer. I believe right now that pitch, people would deny it. Pitch. It's a lot of well, it's a lot of stuff. And I and I love your comment as far as this. It's a lot of stuff that we're rewatching or relooking at and looking at it a different context yeah. because of the way the world is now. I mean, it's. Yeah. Um, I, I love to to pick up where you where you left off there. I love this Krypton here. Mm. We've seen this origin story played over and over again, you know, ad nauseum. We know he came from this planet. We begin, at least it seems like they like to begin these stories with, you know, his Krypton heritage and, you know, his father and his mom. But the detail that they put into this and actually, you know, plan out the whole, um, uh, you know, Krypton just being destroyed just definitely puts it in a much different context you know, as what we're going through, like, you know, today. Not to say that the world is about to end, but many people do think so. Um, but it does put things in a whole, you know, different context when you're viewing this particular, you know, beginning scene here. Hey, you also get to see how the judicial system works, too, on Krypton <laughs> at the very beginning of the movie. <laughs> yeah, I wonder. got to set the little backstory for General Zod, you know, and, you know. Oh, yeah. Well, look, if, yeah. you, if you have a character that's all about truth, justice, and the American way, if justice is Kryptonian, you need to sort of flesh that out a little bit. So I, I appreciate that. <laughs> I also appreciate the, the, um, the, uh, the Antony scene that we get with Jor-El's, like, horse, like, say his air horse dying, uh, you know. <laughs> There's, there's a lot of sort of details that aren't really present in any of these other iterations that are they're just they're just really really interesting you know kryptonian technology is, is sort of its own brand here and i think that's something that makes the choice to use zod you know a very impactful here this is this neil before zod which we all know you know from superman 2 right we all know that's that's super super uh, classic line it is the line classic from the movie. Moment. So Michael Shannon embodies General Zod as sort of like, you know, like a he's got terrible bangs and a terrible beard. <laughs> and, you know, he's these Kryptonians are odd. Like, I don't know. Could, what do you guys think about this whole like, are they all they're all genetically engineered and like they're all born out of a like, what's the deal with that? I'm, I'm not not familiar with that in the uh it's, the superman it's, it's a it's a definitely you know it, it probably comes more or less maybe from the john byrne oh, stuff okay. you know back from the comics and everything because he had a run on you know the man of steel and he decided to do his like you know issues of krypton um and give that give that whole thing a whole backstory and stuff so it's probably coming from there um zide uh, you're right he looks terrible <laughs> but he is such yeah I mean, michael shannon gives him such a great gravitas where I mean, he can't do right. outdo Terrence Stamp, you know, because no. no one can outdo him. But he gives he gives he gives this general's out a good run, you know, um, for the way he just steps into the scene and you know he he comes in to dominate. Um, he's he's ready to um, you know um, 
um, cast, you know, Kal El, I mean, not Kal El, to like the side and, you know, just cast doubt on him. Um, and the plan is about to explode. I mean, you know, they, they, you know, he's trying to warn them in every, I mean, not Zod, but jor trying to warn them. And Zod is, you know, on his own agenda and everything. Mm-hmm. Then, you know, it's, it's all of a sudden just chaos just, just goes all around. And he ends up killing, you know, jor you know, himself. Um, and Laura, you know, sends her baby off. Yeah. <laughs> and won't tell him where? It's a secret. Uh, where? <laughs> Spoiler alert. So... <laughs> All right, so let's now. Now we got to talk a little bit about this whole like, um, you know, crab fishing Clark Kent thing, where we see we see this this the way they handle this origin story is so weird because this gap this gap period is a real big thing in Batman mythos, right? Where he, where he disappears and he trains himself into the world's greatest detective, but Superman doesn't really that doesn't seem to be what's happening, right? right. So no, he's he's out trying to avoid everybody and not trying to learn and own his powers. So Superman is is 33 years old, I think he says. I've been here for 33 years, so he's 33 years old, which is, I'm pretty sure that's the Jesus here, from what I hear. Ah, okay. What do you guys think of the way Snyder portrays uh, Superman and Clark as this Christ-like figure? What do you these these images? There's these images throughout this this piece where he's he's doing the the arm side out to the side thing when he comes out of the Kryptonian ship and flies back to Earth through space, right? He's doing this whole thing. That's a real Zack Snyder moment, and it's interesting to see the way, you know, he's... It's interesting to see the way he's portraying Superman as the savior here, right? Because we sort of get the idea that if it weren't for, like, Clark being sent to Earth, there wouldn't be any Zod on Earth, right? He wouldn't be here trying to conquer Earth because he doesn't care about the planet. He can take uh, any planet. he said in a minute, I mean, as soon as Clark touched the thing, it sent a beacon out, which was, you know, sent a signal to Zod saying, oh, this is, this is where he at. So, I mean, essentially, it's Clark's fault that Zod is on Earth. Yeah. And it's about to, you know, destroy it. But, I mean, that goes back to every superhero. I mean, every superhero creates the supervillain and brings them in. You know, I mean, yeah. it goes back to if there is no superhero, then there is no supervillain. It can't be a supervillain. That's true. Yeah. And, that, right. and that's a very good point, because without fighting Clark, Zod would have no idea of these these properties that could turn a Kryptonian into this like God, you know, like, like he doesn't, that seems to be a surprise to the Kryptonians that the, um, that the, oh, we lost Michael's cam there. But it seems to be a surprise to the Kryptonians <laughs> that the yellow sun will make them superheroes, right? They don't know this. And right. so if they're not fighting Clark, they're not going to find out, Oh wait, I have this, you know, I have this technology right. available to me that I can use. Right. right. So, let me ask you guys this. This is my thought, and it's a weird thought. So, you know, sorry. But that's, wh- that's what we have you here for. <laughs> so so Clark Kent Let's go off the wall. Clark Clark Kent is an indestructible man, right? You can't kill him, mm-hmm. right? You can't. Mm-hmm. He's just like that's his, his superpower. And yet he decides to utilize his superpower purely with his like purely utilizing the muscle end of his superpower. Like that's what he's doing, right? He's saving people by picking up the bus right he's saving people by you know by picking up <laughs> picking up the oil rig <laughs> which yeah, he does yeah. right like it's right it's so crazy what do you think about like what does it say about superman that he seems to be only limited by his like imagination and the thing he imagines to do is lift heavy things right that's all he can think of what does that well, say about i guess superman? maybe it's still the development of the character you know, maybe he had more to, you know, grow on in other movies that are going to, you know, happen. You know, I mean, well, just like Iron Man, you know, at the beginning of Iron Man, you know, he started off this character mm-hmm. and then you develop him. So maybe Daniel Snyder had this mind, and you know, that he wants to develop Superman, you know, from a from a murderer <laughs> to the beacon of hope. Right. <laughs> He's not a murderer. Well, he doesn't right. murder. Who's he murder? He doesn't murder. He doesn't. Mur- that's not murder. That's not murder. That's, 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 that that's, is cold blooded murder. Oh, we'll, we'll get to that. Let's let's get to that. Point. <laughs> for, for, the, for the for the pur for the purpose of our <laughs> listeners, you know, um, I, the, the Daniel Snyder, it, the the Washington football, you know, football team um, owner is not the director right. of this movie. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> as, as, as you keep saying that, you know, we we just kept like, but it's all good though. But let's let's go. Let's 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 just pare it down here. So. 
for the purpose of this movie, we we I guess we really should just keep calling him Clark because the movie is called Man of Steel. Yeah. It's not called Superman. You know, they don't actually introduce a concept of Superman until maybe three quarters into like the movie. You know, mm-hmm. so for the most part, even when he does his costume, he's still being referred to as Clark. He's not really looking at it like an identity or a secret identity until like maybe afterwards when they realize, OK, I need to protect my, my loved ones and stuff. Um, but for the for the move for the um, for the part in the beginning where, you know, he's a um, you know, he's a fisherman and everything. He's saving the people. You know, he's full fledged out there, you know, just saving folks. You know, in full Clark, you know, regalia, he's not wearing a mask or putting anything on, you know, trying to hide himself. He's 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 being a um, savior, you know, like, you know, um, Hitch was saying, he's being a savior and, and a Christ type figure. All his purpose is, is to use his muscles to to save people. He's not using his heat vision. He's not using his cold skills or whatever. So maybe like, um, um, do, you know, um, Michael was saying, um, He's just he's he's only he's only using this muscle that he knows about mm. that he's that is just really the most prominent thing in his physical being to 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 help others and stuff. Because what really what else is really is really going to help in these situations as far as heat, you know, cold and all that stuff. He won't really do that until later in his, his superhero. I don't mean look, I don't mean his other powers. I'm not I, that's not what I meant. I meant why isn't he like, oh, I don't know, you know. Why isn't he leading a charge to solve maybe political problems or problems that we we so, find so, we find to exist in our world that can't be solved with punching? You know what I'm saying? So 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 here's the thing: the history of is the of this character, especially when dealing with Batman. Mm-hmm. Okay, Batman's a smart one. Superman is the not as smart one. You know, not not. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how you go, just not as smart. <laughs> <laughs> not as smart. Well, he's not he's not completely looked upon as done when he's on a solo adventure. It's just. <laughs> When he's with Batman, I mean, it's it's like this thing. Okay, well, you dumb, you know, jock and stuff. You know, all you have is just, love, <laughs> you know, uh, and we'll see that come up, you know, come about sort of like in the yeah. next movie. But uh, but that's how that that that's how he's sort of like you know being portrayed. Maybe you know in this instance, I I want to see a Superman who explains i want to I want to see why he isn't just fixing stuff, right? I, that's that's the question I have about Superman, and maybe that's just. That's just me. Maybe that's just my problem with the character, like you're saying, DP, is that... Well, I mean, you see how well that worked out for Dr. Manhattan, that's right? True. I mean, he does a... <laughs> that's true. Good point. Great point. But Great I point. think maybe maybe what you're hitting on is maybe just me, is that I'm missing Batman in this movie. I'm missing the influence of the strategist, and I'm missing that. And that's maybe just because I want a Batman movie. <laughs> and maybe maybe there's just nothing about, nothing about a Superman movie that's ever going to make me wish Batman... You know, not make me but, wish but Batman I, were in it. I don't. I don't think you're wrong, though. I think it would be a very creative way to deal with a different Superman who will use, was using more of his brains and his brawn, you know, and integrating a lot of his, you know, other stuff. But granted, like I said, this is Man of Steel, yeah. so it's a meant is the 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 sense that this is the direction they wanted to go is meant to actually um, um, embody what this character is before he actually became Superman, mm-hmm. you know, on the. Right was to actually you know do maybe the his next sequel you know as superman but he's not superman yet yeah. he's still clark right i mean even the s on his chest didn't even rep, uh, represent superman mm-hmm. you know it was just the symbol of hope right so i mean it, he wasn't even superman it wasn't until lois you know made him superman yeah yeah exactly so you know so so clark is the man of steel and to me if that's the case then it seems to me that the movie is portraying his restraint as being his superpower, his ability not to use his superpowers is is sort of what makes him a superhero. His his ability to control himself, and I think to to you know to go to the end to talk about what happens with Zod at the end, which is Superman kills him in the movie way, which is snapping his neck from behind like this, like everybody who's in a movie knows how to do. I'm glad I don't live in that reality because I'd be too right. Impulsive. It would swift move. What? Just swift imagine like you're in the grocery <laughs> line. <laughs> checking out boop, boop. um so he so he kills zod at the end and he has to use his power to its full bore and he can't stop he cannot avoid it 
And morally, I don't think that there's any question whether or not it's justified. I mean, he's Sod is trying to melt a kid, a person, <laughs> like as <laughs> as Superman kills him. A lot of people had a problem with that hitch. A lot of people had a problem with that. It's, yes. it's this interesting. A lot, a lot of people had a problem with that. So <laughs> the movie puts him in this position. So the movie is sort of answering this hypothetical question: Can super, can Superman kill somebody? Right. And that's it's this interesting idea. Batman would say the the Batman answer is never. Right. Never. <laughs> but, but the Superman answer is not never. It's if I have no other choice, right? Like Batman won't bring it, won't even bring a gun to the fight. But Superman has it. He has it. He's got yeah. it holstered here, and oh, yeah. and he's gonna snap. He's gonna uh, gonna kill Zod. It's interesting to see all these scenes of uh, of Pa Kent telling him not to use his powers and to hide and to Restraint. prevent people from finding him. Uh -huh. He has to fight against that. Once he has a a an opponent that's his class, I'm I'm reminded well, a little bit of how Hulk got beat up by Thanos at the beginning of um, of Avengers three, because Thanos was as strong as Hulk, but he had a, he had control, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and the thing is, Clark has no type of training, mm -hmm. not, not as far as physical training. He's been taught by his dad to you know restrain himself. You know, he doesn't have any of the military training. Right. Yeah, he fight doesn't training. have don't no fight training or anything like he, that. He doesn't so, have any MMA action. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but surprisingly, you know, he knows how to fight. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it is what it is. But I mean, he he holds his own against Zod uh, with the punches and the kicks or whatever. But um, you know, he's still restrained. So to to talk about the way that they went in that direction. Uh, which, in um, essence, if you know the movie went, goes in the direction of him having to make a choice, mm. you know, he he chooses to um, you know save these 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 people because Zod was he told him he was about to destroy everything if he kept them alive. Zod gave him a, a choice of well, if you keep me around, I'm going to destroy this world, destroy this universe. Um, Clark, not Superman, mm. Clark had to make a choice. You know, am I going to be, what type of person am I going to be, which is really, in my eyes, what makes this movie, um, it defines the essence of what, what, you know, what this character, you know, is about to be. And he went from Man of Steel to actually being Superman in that choice. Because from here on out, this Superman here should never, ever make that choice to kill because he right, I mean, because he'll eventually get to train it to make other choices. So he doesn't even put Zot in that, in that scenario uh, to where he's killing, like, you know, um, um, you know, individual and stuff. Now, you can actually say all the destruction that they caused killed a lot of people. <laughs> well, so I, if you I'm glad that they did pay that off, the right? Foundation to help out with that. The good news is oh, yeah. this is a – this is a we know that that's going to be paid off later. And that's the good news maybe about this, um, this cycle of movies is they don't – you know, maybe they don't whiff on that question. They don't punt on it. They actually answer that question later on. And I think it's a very important question to answer. What is collateral damage to these guys? You know what I mean? What what sort of responsibility do they bear to deal with the collateral damage that they are, you know, in in some ways causing? I think what's deft about the uh, Superman Zod fight, what's good about it, is that the choice that's presented to Clark is a choice between his Kryptonian self and his human self. Right between Kal El and Clark Kent, and Zadi, you know, is Dorel even says this. You're as much of an Earther now. You're as much of an Earthling as a as a Kryptonian. And so the choice that he's he's being forced to make by Zod is one or the other. Where he keeps saying, "We don't have to do that. <laughs> There's enough to go around." Right. right? Imagine, imagine, you know, an Earth protected by a, a, a force of Kryptonians, Superman Kryptonians. That's ridiculously safe place uh but the problem is and i think this is what jarell's saying is that if you export if you export the kryptonian lifestyle to another planet without fixing it then you're just exporting the destruction of that planet in the future right well, but they also missed a grand opportunity to introduce the phantom zone i mean that's where general zod should be it should go and a character like himself should not be recreated as a monster, but recreated and brought back later if the you know the movies would have been you know kept going. But if Clark, if Clark had more train, more experience, I should say, um, because this is all just new to him. Yeah. Period. This is the first time he's fought somebody. 
you know, <laughs> to this, to, to this, and he's fought, he's fighting, you know, one of the, the, the biggest generals from, you know, um, Krypton, um, you know, mass uh, is ready to, you know, um, commit mass genocide and everything. So we, when, when, when Clark is, um, you know, um, um, fighting Zod, you know, it, it could really be at the end there, he could take Zod and take him to a whole different place to carry him and not a- actually have him um, almost kill, like, you know, the people and stuff, you know, within, within that building, within that, you know, building structure, instead of, you know, just snapping his neck. But that's a, that's the untrained Clark, hmm. you know, but we're, we're talking about an untrained Clark here who feels that it's his only choice but to snap his neck because he's not trained. He's still the man of steel, you know, at this point. So the, if he comes upon this scenario, another, you know, with another villain and at another time, you, you, he should not make the same mistake all over again. But is it as a far mistake? As, you know, killing. Is it a mistake to kill it's, it's, it, it's, it's not a mistake in the context of what the movie wants us to look at. No, right. what I, I the believe- movie is going for is what it what it went for. It it, it did portray that way. Well, you know, I mean, it's different. So why did you why did you have a problem with it though, uh, Michael? Because the Superman that I grew up with has not really killed anybody, and I mean, he took his he had he had him in his arms, and you know, what I mean, instead of choking him out or having one little robot send him off to the Phantom Zone, you know, he ends up snapping his neck. Hmm. And so the so, so the debate is he's not Superman yet though. So if you're if you're feeling that okay, the Superman you grew up with didn't do all that. And this character in this movie isn't Superman yet. Can you really make that? I, I it's your opinion. And everything I totally respect yeah. that. Can you really make that um um judgment, or or can you really make that argument there? Well, as as Hitchens tried to say earlier, like you know, this portrays him like okay, now I've done this, and now I'm going to reinvent myself to where I never have to put myself in that position again, to where I have to kill somebody. So I could see how that could transpire, and okay. you know. And, you know, happen into like the later of the movies be like, maybe if the opportunity came up again, he wouldn't do such a thing and he would find another way, you know, i.e. except for, you know, a gigantic monster that, you know, is attacking everybody. Well, let's say that that we take we take like that, you know, they're going to take we know we're going to they're going to take all the Zod parts out of Zod. Right. We know what's going to happen is that they're going to take all of that. You know, I can see why you feel that threatened. Like, that's the thing about Zod. I see. I get it. He's here to you know, to maintain the Kryptonian race. And he's here to make sure that goes forward. Right. He knows, he knows all that. So for Zod, you know, there's some redeeming qualities, but for what they do with Zod, the next thing that happens, there are not. And in my opinion, the lesson he learns here isn't, it was a bad thing to kill Zod, but I should have done it earlier and I shouldn't have hemmed and hawed and had all this collateral damage happen. I should have just dealt with it. Yes. Well, I don't think he could do it earlier. <laughs> he was still. He, well, he could have done it before he got the before he got the sun, right? I mean, Yellow Sun yeah. Superman against Red Sun Zod is not a fight. And yeah. Well, the, the, did he even expect Zod to go to the point of where you know? Just, I mean, that was some mass destruction. Is is what they portrayed in Metropolis, mm. which is out and out just crazy insane. A lot of people died. Yeah. So I mean, let's just get put that on the table. A lot, a lot of a lot, buildings fell. On a people. lot of buildings fell on a lot of people. A lot of cars smacked into a lot of folks and everything. Super, uh, Clark, I was about to call him Superman. <laughs> Clark seemed to not really care, you know, when he was going through, you know, fighting these guys and everything. And that goes in a lot into the character that they portrayed him in this movie of still of him still being a man of steel and Clark and stuff. Um, maybe he, in hindsight, is nightmares about what happened you know, with um, his battle with Zod and it said, never again, you know, never again will I, you know, cause this type of construction. Let me take this um, bad guy to another place, to Zev- the desert somewhere to, um, or lure him out there to have like less destruction because, I mean, the destruction that was caused in this movie was just totally outrageous. And it was one of the biggest um, turnoffs, what I, what I feel, uh, you know, a lot of people didn't like about, you know, this movie. It's interesting to see this order of operations as Zod first, Lex Luthor second. That's what's so interesting about that's what's interesting about these this series of movies in comparison to maybe the Donner movies, right? The seventies movies, is we got, you know, sort of Superman fighting the worst of humanity, right? The worst pieces of us first, then fighting the worst pieces of Krypton. And here we are presented with a Superman who is first fighting the worst of Krypton 
and now is going to be encountering the worst of humanity. So that order of operations is so different because like the, the Superman is not going to be moving forward with some sort of like fake reverence or some sort of reverence for a Krypton that isn't real. He's encountered it. He's encountered their soldiery, right? He knows yeah. a lot about them and he knows it's the Krypton is dangerous. And so one thing this answers forever is why doesn't he try to bring Krypton back? Well, pretty good reasons, right? We're getting a lot of good reasons here why he wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, he wants to be the strongest person, right? So why would he bring back anybody that's equal to him? Well, this is the interesting thing about Superman, right? Like, we talk about Batman in comparison, and it's good. This is the classic compare contrast, so I'm going to indulge in it. But Batman, by comparison, is rigidly trained to, like, the, you know, if there's a way for him to win the fight, he wins it, right? Like, that's the way to put it, I think. Yeah. If he can win it, he will. And, you know, Superman sort of fights you like a big brother, you know what I mean? You can't beat him. Nothing you like. You know what I mean? You can't beat him. So when you have something that makes the the playing field even, it messes him up, because he's not anticipating that he won't be the biggest cannon on the field, the biggest fist in the fight. And so when he finally encounters somebody that is able to, to fight him, and he has none of that training, I mean, he's got to get better, right? Isn't that the takeaway from this? That if he was more like if he had reached his full potential here that none of this destruction would have happened and Zod wouldn't have been able to overpower him. Yeah, I mean, but you're talking about like a movie where we, they, 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 they made choices with the Man of Steel, Superman, you know, if you, if you will. Um, before, before this movie came out, I, I just remember the discourse around the Superman, you know, movies and everything and how they've been constant failures and stuff. Everything after Superman 2 was just like, okay, Superman 3 and 4 was just total garbage. And then they tried to reboot again with the, um, you know, Brandon Ralph, Brandon Ralph. Uh, with the, the Superman Ugh. Returns. That wasn't Ugh. really great. So they didn't have a really great track where, you know, you had like the Smallville and like, you know, television stuff. Eh, you know, so, so. But you, you really didn't have a really great track record with Superman in the movies. So people was like, why can, can we really, is this really a character worth actually putting on the screen and actually, you know, um, having a really great movie? But Warner Brothers being Warner Brothers and Superman being the Superman character that he is, being the first superhero, let's try to do it again. Mm -hmm. So what do so so what decision do they decide to do? So they decide to take the the uh, Christopher Nolan, who had much success with the Dark Knight, the darkest Batman movies that we've seen, um, and actually have him come up with ideas for a Superman. Christopher Nolan came up with the ideas, not Zack Snyder. You know, he had sort of enhanced Chris Nolan's ideas, but Chris uh, Chris Nolan wrote this movie along with, you know, Jonathan um, or David Goy or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, he wrote this movie and wrote all the ideas and everything on how this world would have this type of Superman. And basically, Zach, you know, just directed, you know, the, the script from that. So um, I, I guess it's, it's uh, different. When, when when people come when when they when Warner Brothers comes with this particular case, you know, take a Superman, then you get people like um, Michael and others who feel that this wasn't their Superman. So <laughs> my argument, my argument is like, well, what Superman would do you really want? They tried years and years. They tried time and time again, and you didn't really support or you know take to what they put out there before. So when they come with this type of Superman, it's still some, some, something that you don't want. So what, what, <laughs> what do you want? What do you want from it? Dean Cain was a great Superman. Dean Cain <laughs> was decent. Lois Dean Cain was a great Superman. And, that's, was a great was show. and luckily, nothing ever <laughs> happened again. So, <laughs> so, 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 so to, to go back to my point here, yeah. um, what they could have did was just um, give him a lot more. Um, uh, they didn't have to draw draw out the whole angst and stuff mm -hmm. of Clark Kent. They could have shortened that and shrunk that down to a point where he learn he's learned his lessons and and especially you know dealing with his dad. If his dad was going to be as much a part of Clark in the movie, mm -hmm. he could have taught him a whole lot more <laughs> than just hold your stuff in, hold your stuff in, hold yeah. your stuff in. You know, be a better father, be a better trainer. So when he comes to this point, you know how powerful this potential um, 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 person can be. And if he's led upon the world in a bad way, he could potentially be dangerous. Yeah. You know, this is your dad. So all his dad is telling him, hold back, hold back. So 
how what are you going to teach him um when when um he eventually explodes and thus the destruction of the metropolis thus what you get with um you know zod at there at the end so Let's blame let's blame the, the real culprit here, Pa Kent. Well, maybe maybe it's Pa's fault for not being around <laughs> optionally, and just checking out in '97, right? I mean, come on. Oh, maybe. Let me ask you. You know, here's the thing, and this is maybe just a Hollywood thing. They don't they don't you know they don't understand what a twister is, I guess, because you know, <laughs> if you put Clark in that car, right? Clark, go get the dog. Okay. okay, and he just runs and gets the dog, right? Dog runs out. Clark's stuck in the car. Twister throws the car somewhere. Clark's fine, and everyone goes. Twisters are crazy, and they move on. <laughs> right. I mean, we've we've all seen that story before, where a kid gets thrown a football field and still is okay. Lands yeah. in the cornfield, yeah. walks I, away. You know? Yeah, you I don't, that. I don't like. Yeah, as you touch on that, I mean that that whole tornado that that scene that I mean, I ain't letting my paw die by a tornado. Mm. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. That was a poorly piss poor written scene. Just to keep himself back? No, not at all. I mean, if I'm a, you know, if I, you, 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 we, we've had, you know, loved ones that, you know, yeah. that, that, that we've lost and everything. Um, that is just not happening. Right. My dad is not dying by, it, especially if I got the power to right. actually save him. No, that's just not happening. Not really believable, Zach. Yeah, there's no yeah. way. Come on, Zach. There's no not way. Not Daniel, Zach. <laughs> he could have run around the back and run around the side. <laughs> he's fast. Right. He's the he's man of steel. Yeah. No one can even see him. I mean, oh, hey, that was a blur. Oh, the whole point what, of what Superman is there? that you should never. Blur. These questions should never come up in the in the plot of a Superman story, right? Well, was he is he strong enough or fast enough to do that? Right. The answer is just yes. <laughs> That's the yeah. answer. He could just, do it. Just just give him a heart attack and you know just let right. him move on. You know. He should have yeah. a heart attack like all the Paw Kents have a heart attack. Yeah. Give, give Paul Kent the heart attack, not a tornado. No, not a tornado. And this that is, was poorly, poorly done. And how is this, like, this this ethos is, like, let's compare it to, to Uncle Ben, right? The Uncle Ben ethos. Uncle Ben says, if you can do something, you have to do it. You're obligated to do it from a moral perspective. But in this universe, Superman, apparently not the case, right? It's more important that... Not yet. He's not Superman well, yet. Well, for Clark... <laughs> It's more important to maintain his his personal safety than yeah. to save other people, and that maybe is what is ringing rings so false about this advice he gets from his dad, is that we know it wasn't great advice. No, we know that he has to extend himself. The idea that yeah. he can be safe is a lie, and that is right. that is the problem with what Pa Kent does, as he has assumed that nothing will ever be able to hurt Clark, and he's wrong. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, and then you have the, um, you know, juxtapose that with jor when he comes back and actually is like, you know, the ghostly visage of, you know, the, the, the jor that passed away. Yeah. Um, and he actually starts to teach Clark, you know, about himself and, you know, how powerful he is and gives him his suit. You know, this yeah. is your Kryptonian suit, you know. This is, the, I mean, he knows his son. So, I mean, um, granted, he's not really around to really physically teach his son, but he gives him bits and pieces of what Superman will eventually be. Yep. Like I said, hell, hell, he gives him his costume. Um, yeah, it's, it's better than having a montage of him training. So, laughing <laughs> <laughs> at like punching a robot and it just goes all the way through the mantle of the earth and a bunch of lava yeah. flies up and he's just like, ha, 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 ha. You know? <laughs> uh, they, they did spare us that. And they, they did also, spare, you know, we haven't yet seen Batman's parents die. So we yeah, we still have to, that's on the list. I know it's not a Batman movie, but they kill him so often. I'm just going to count this as 0 for 1 because because uh, <laughs> they kill him in every movie. Uh, I, what is this? What is what is your overall like impression of this movie? I know that we are sort of we are our, our like position in history is we sort of know that like this iteration of DC uh, universe isn't really working. It's not really going to work out. right? Like, we already know that like there isn't a Justice League 2 that's really probably going to happen. And that even the, if it is, it's not going forward with Affleck. Right. And probably not Cavill. So it's it, things are going to be different now if there is going to be a DCCU. So what do you guys think about Man of Steel? Like it had the job of setting the universe up. So do you guys think it accomplished that effectively or not? I think uh, I'll, I'll let you start, Michael. Go. Um, I mean, as for starting off the universe, I mean, I, I felt like it definitely had potential. It was definitely not the worst movie, um, especially if, by comparison, you know, the movies that we're going to be comparing. It's definitely not the worst of them. Um, so, I mean, it, you, it definitely left up the potential 
of you know expanding the universe. So, uh, I mean, he, Zack Snyder did exactly what he wanted to do. He he, he created that uh, you know a gritty Superman movie, and I mean, in, in the in the most parts, it worked. Um. So this was supposed to be their Iron Man. Yeah. You know, to start the universe, and I don't think they really like. I don't think the writers really had that intention. And I think Zach really had to add those elements into it once he got the, his hands on the script, you know. So, um, like I said, Chris Nolan wrote the movie. It wasn't his really intention to start a universe or whatever. And you can really, and as far as I'm concerned, you can really tell because it, it, while it just does mention like you know Wayne Corp and you know Lex Corp, those are just like things you see on like a building or a you know a truck exploded and everything. It doesn't really plant any seeds that there might be potential other superheroes. You know, existing in the world, but granted, you know, Man of Steel in history is the first superhero, so it's almost like how could it be? Mm -hmm. But if you really think about the fact that Wonder Woman took place way before this, um, and there was some things that happened in the universe as far as like the Green Lantern Corp and other stuff like that, you don't really have any type of elements or any type of thing um, that there any any supernatural or any type of uh, sci-fi. Uh, other than Superman itself, exists in this universe, which I would really, I, I would have really appreciated a little bit more things in, in you know, in in, in in that context. Um, I think after the movie was done and Warner Brothers see, seen how, um, see how it did, then they decided, okay, we're going to expand this, and you know, uh, we got like the best superheroes out here, so let's do our Mar let's do our Marvel thing now instead of trying to. Uh, make a Batman movie instead of trying to make a separate Wonder Woman movie, which they eventually did. Yeah. Uh, Aquaman movie, which was after the fact. Um, Marvel, Marvel's way was doing this to individual characters and then bring them together. DC tried to do it the other way around and end up being like a other other failure. Yeah, this this movie did seem like a like a standalone movie as opposed to you know bringing in everything as well too as you mentioned. Right. So I mean, as I mean, as a standalone movie introducing a character. In this universe, I think that's where it succeeded, yeah. as opposed to bringing in all the other characters. As you say, I mean, Wonder Woman already existed. You know, the Green Lantern Corps already existed. You know, all, all these things have already existed. You know, Batman has already existed, and you don't see that until the next movie when they go, "Okay, well, let's try to make this universe right and try yeah. to throw it together. Let's try to graft it on." I think maybe. Maybe it seems almost like this movie isn't isn't supposed to be that, and then the next movie is. It's almost like what the problem here is that they did like six points out of ten on the on like the throwing the ball forward scale, and they hedged their bets whether or not this would be successful, right? Right. Uh, which is kind of what Marvel did in the first phase. Like if you really look at Thor and Captain America one, like Captain America one's the only real reach in the first Marvel movies. Like that's the one where you watch it, you're like, wow. Like they really went like sideways. So from a standpoint of, of introducing the, the, the Cavill Superman, I think that it's a big success because it sets up that, that conflict between, you know, do I act now or do I, you know, try not to act, right? Do I, do I try, you know, not to do these things? And, and I think that what it failed at is it failed to make me want to see more you know, more into the universe. I, I think I, I feel like this story is enough where I go, okay, right? Like there's not anything hanging out there where I need to see what's happening next to Superman. I sort of assume right. this is the biggest thing he's going to face, right? Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah, you didn't have a Nick Fury at the end coming in and saying, <laughs> hey, you know. <laughs> well, and, 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 yeah, and let's think about that because Wonder, we, you know, you talked uh, a DP about how, you know, Diana's out there, right? We know she's out there right now chronologically because she's in, you know, the 70s and the 80s, so she's definitely uh yeah. active now um batman the batman we meet is uh ben affleck aged which is you know like somewhere between 40 and you know 60 we don't well, know well we always know he was in metropolis i mean he went and saved somebody right. out of the building. he's there <laughs> we know he's present so we know he's actually yeah. here during this move like during this piece right because we see his perspective of it soon so for me uh, yeah. i want to see that more of that drop i think they they just needed to be slightly heavier with you know with with the other stuff here and i think all we get is a lux corp reference and a wayne corp reference and that's just well that's what dp was saying earlier too you know it's like they didn't want to risk going into the universe they, they wanted to see how the project worked yeah let's dip our toes they, uh, 
you know, yeah. painted himself in a corner. Timidity. Yeah. Introducing and, and 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 that's the difference between uh, a, a company that is fearless with its characters, and which is really funny too, because Warner Brother owns its characters. Marvel didn't even own any of its characters, yeah. and you know had to wait to the rights to revert back to them for like Iron Man and Thor, and um, you know um, I think they already had the Hulk or whatever. Warner Brothers owns its characters all this time, but we're still yet afraid to do what Mar- what they sh- what Marvel did. You know, they should have, Warner Brothers should have been did this. You know, they had yeah. these characters sitting there together all, you know, all this time and couldn't create, like, you know, separate. Um, my ideal thing would have been to have a Batman movie that did its own standalone thing um, and maybe do a Wonder Woman, Woman, uh, Wonder Woman movie after that. And then you bring those characters together. That's the right way to me. I mean, granted, Marvel, you know, that's how they did it. And they, they sort of had wrote and written a pay, playbook about it. But you don't create a Batman versus Superman right after this movie without actually introducing how a Batman is going to fit into this type of universe. That's just ridiculous. We'll yeah. T- oh, yeah. We'll, we'll definitely talk more into that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for but sure. When we do the next movie of how that's just one big cluster. Oh, no. That's the bat- <laughs> that guess, movie. You know, is like, and I love that movie. Movies. But we'll talk about that, you know, to be continued. We're all allowed but, to have um, our opinions here. Even though <laughs> we're allowed to have a terrible but, but, opinion. But as a standalone, uh, yes, like Hitch said, um, we really introduced um, Cavill as a really great, you know, character in this movie you know, as far as Superman. And I, I think for the standalone portion, it's an overall success. I, I, yeah. Except for the tornado scene. I, I agree. I, I, as a standalone, it is an overall success. I mean, I would. I, I love would, Lois Lane. Uh, as Hitch said, yes. I, I gave it about a six out of the 10, you know, 6.5. That's, that's where I'm looking at it. You know, a, a quality movie. I'll see it again. I watch it on TBS when it's on, yeah. you know? I think if this were a music video, you know what I mean? And I feel like this is how I love to just relate to Zack Snyder stuff, even even Watchmen, right? If Watchmen were a music video, it would be better too. This movie, the casting is 10 out of 10. Lawrence Fishburne, Amy Adams, Henry... I mean, everything yeah. is excellent in this movie. Yeah. Every single, like, yeah. side yeah. character, every little... Everybody's perfect. The way it looks is so oh, interesting. except for Jimmy Olsen. That's true. <laughs> except for Jimmy Olsen, it's really great. Uh, every every visual tick of this is so interesting, and that's hard to do with a character that's had as long of a history as Superman. Everyone knows what the Superman suit looks like, right? For you to make the rest of that deep and interesting is very difficult, and, and it takes so much talent. And Zack Snyder really has that. The problem I run into is that a lot of like the plotting sometimes doesn't make a hundred percent of the sense, just because maybe there's a better way to figure something out. And you know, for me, if this movie were in Japanese. And I were looking at watching subtitles of it, right? I would probably like this movie a lot more than I do. <laughs> and that's something that is a, a state. It's an indictment of the way I enjoy these things and how they make them too. Right. So it's both of those things, but I, I feel like that. That's the way I feel about these. So same way I feel about all the Jar Jar Binks stuff from star Wars too, just oh, in case, just to oh, give us a little on. crossover into oh, our other show. On. Here we go. Carbonite Bounty BS. Now, if you don't know about Carbonite Bounty BS, <laughs> uh, it is a show that we do weekly, or as weekly as we can get it. Right now, we're doing The Clone Wars. We just finished. Uh, we're in the middle of season two of The Clone Wars. Uh, DP's on that show. So check us out. That's a little ad. That's a little synergy for you guys. Uh, wanted to get that out there while we were talking. Uh, I'm. What are you guys looking into... Let's talk about, just to compare the universes, because I feel like we have one cinematic universe that was extremely successful in the, in the teens. You're really going to compare that? Let's no. talk, well, and I'm not going to, no, no, not for the success, because there's no scaling. They don't, there's no, like, no mathematical way to compare these two things. But let's talk about um, Iron Man versus this movie. I like that comparison a lot, DP. I think you brought up the Iron Man versus versus this movie comparison. I and mean, Iron Man is now, a success only- in both things, right? It introduces, you know, Robbie Downey Jr.'s Tony Stark in a way that echoes at the end of this story perfectly, right? Because I Am Iron Man echoes perfectly. And it introduces the MCU perfectly because I now believe that you can build all this, all that stuff on top of this. Like, it sets up a universe where now possibilities are accelerating. So, now, yeah. the, the only problem with that in comparison to that assessment, if you're looking to compare Iron Man with, with Superman, you're only comparing it because it's the first movies of each one. Right. But... You got to compare Batman is more with the Iron Man, sure. and that's where it failed as making the movie first and trying to build this universe because you just throw a Superman movie out there 
where Superman is all punch, 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 yeah. you know, where you, you got to get the, how does that bring it all together? Superman's not going to bring all these people together. Yeah. So great point. Um, and what I've always thought or what I've always wished is that um, they integrated Dark Knight with the Superman universe. Um, this is just like my own personal thing, whether people like it or not. I, 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 I told you how to write that script. <laughs> so, 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 so if you already had Batman Christian Bell established and there was no fantasy elements in that world or whatever. So it was almost like, how could he be, you even introduce this type of thing? So being that, um, in this world, Superman and his powers in science fiction hasn't really existed until he came on earth. You could have theoretically had, um, you know, a dark night doing his thing. And all of a sudden, you know, Superman comes to Earth instead of, you know, Batman is the first one. And then Superman comes. Batman investigates who this guy is, you know, and then finds out, um, OK, well, you know, he's not as bad as I thought, which is essentially what Batman versus Superman ends up being anyway. Um, look at look at maybe up. maybe I'm looking in the wrong I'm casting in the wrong direction talking about Iron Man. Maybe I need to talk about Batman Begins and the way that Batman Begins built the Batman universe for the future movies and did so in a way that was better than how Superman is built here. Right? And, and all they do is they have the Joker card at the end. That's it. The people Very and that's subtle. it. Very subtle thing. This guy's crazy. Here it is. Boom. And now the key now the door's open forever. And that is maybe the better comparison because that is a DCU. And it seems like they just ran out of money <laughs> making yeah, those they, movies. They, they, Zach, Zach relied more on the visuals. Well, what, what he does in his <laughs> movies, period. He relies more, so much more on the visual, visuals than the subtleties mm-hmm. um, that, that, that were displayed in uh, maybe like a Chris Nolan, you know, written film or whatever. Well, what's Nolan's um, thing? What's Nolan's like? Like, look at, okay, so maybe maybe this practical. comes down to the filmmaker, he's right? Practical. He's yeah, practical. He's right. practical. <laughs> he's effects based, and he's a writer. He's a screenwriter, yeah. right? He writes. It's it, it's an in depth it's an in depth look at everything. And which Snyder is, Snyder again is a music video director and he's excellent at it. He's which, the best one. Which is which is really ironic because um, Nolan chose Z- Snyder personally to direct this movie. Well, if if he were and writing Chris's that, script, right? If he were just staying on that, it maybe would have been a different thing. But he he's not. He's he can't be not Zack Snyder. We've seen enough from him at this point to know that that is the case, right? This yeah. movie that we're doing this, be- we are doing this because, you know, the Justice League Snyder Cut's coming out. Let's, let's put yeah. those yeah. cards on the table since we haven't talked about it. So we're doing right. it because of that. So we're getting another, like, we're going to find out, I guess, <laughs> what it would have been different about this. And apparently there's a couple things. So I'm interested to see uh, we what see. we get. And, you know, it's been fun to even just talk about um you just talk about this movie which when it came out i, I remember seeing it and being sort of like it's okay you know what i mean it was okay yeah. and a lot of the mom- like the marvel mcu momentum really doesn't it hadn't hit yet yeah. um so from a historical standpoint a lot of the differentiation between the two uh you know the two companies started starts about here it's all about what yeah. happens after 2013 what happens like after I think the Winter Soldier comes out after Avengers 2 is 15. And then we are suddenly on a track where everybody acknowledges that the MCU Wait, wait, wait. The Avenger, first Avengers came out in 12 or 13? Avengers came out in 12. Yeah, okay. 12. Okay, so by that time, we already had the United of the Superheroes. We had the um, playbook already established. Right. And then they come with this and do it a different way. And DC says that, okay, well, we have, like, the better characters, mm-hmm. the more well-known characters. Um we can just blow past what Marvel does. Let's go make our money. Yeah, they, they, they relied on the name of the character as mm-hmm. opposed to developing the, the storyline. Yes. So mm-hmm. what would have been the optimal way to do this? And maybe maybe they, they Ryan Reynolds themselves into thinking they, they couldn't just do a John Stewart Green Lantern and start there, right? Because that that story, in my opinion, has this has all the cosmic properties to it because of the Green Lantern Corps. But he's also, he's John Stewart, a U.S. Marine. And so it has that grounding in reality. And you can have Superman can exist in these universes, but he's he's the big brother, right? You watch a Justice League cartoon. What happens at the end of every Justice League? Superman comes to his senses, and the story ends, right? <laughs> that's and that's what happens here, right? He comes to his senses. Oh, I can't let this murder go on. <laughs> he says, "That's that's the end of it." So for me, I think that maybe uh, what they missed on is that having is that there was no hype leading into this movie. And yeah. that maybe is the difference between this movie and 
other successful iterations of superhero origin stories is that if you tell this story up front, you're starting from zilch. And, and then to also, too, Marvel spoiled us by, at this point already. Yeah, yeah. yeah and so we spoiled we, us and set an expectation mm-hmm. of what to look for. Mm-hmm. And then we get this. And then, and I, I, um, Michael, you hit the nail on the head. I had so many expectations. I I should say I had so many expectations, but I have uh, better expectations coming into this movie that they could do a better job expanding it. And it right, because if they can make an Iron Man that. movie, you know, an Iron Man who's not that known of a character. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. well, he's popular, but he's not on the level of Superman popular. No, not at all. And not then, at all. So you you look at this. Okay, so Marvel's churning out these movies. I mean, even a Thor movie came out by this time, and then and then you get this this Superman, and you, you're expecting. You you know that they want to build this universe has no it, humor so, in it whatsoever. Mm-hmm. I mean, I yeah. don't remember any type of humor, you know. And this is what we expect from Marvel movies at this point, like that element of like humor. This movie has none of that. Yeah, <laughs> it's like not fun. Like, why isn't it fun? Why why shouldn't it be fun to be? This should be fun to be Superman sometimes, right? It shouldn't just be right. a terrible death, like death, like I'm f- afraid and I'm I'm, I'm t- terrified. And I'm angry. Like it should, there should be some stuff about Superman that's neat. To go back well, we, to the Dean Cain one that I know uh, Michael loves yeah. so much, there's this episode. I'm, I'm, think, I'm remembering this specific episode where he runs to, like, he gets her ice from, like, the Alps or something. And just, like, for, just like zoop, zoop, and he just has it, right? And it's, like, right. kind of a funny thing that just Superman did because he, he, he has this capability. And that, yeah. that, that maybe is an angle that's missing from this is that, like, to Clark, these feats aren't feats they're just you know what i mean like if i pick up if i pick up my phone you know what i'm saying like it's not this isn't amazing but if this weighed 100 billion tons it would be right it would be amazing i could do this and so for clark like all the stuff he does is just normal stuff and that's missing from this that's missing from this is that he doesn't have the idea of of that normality like he he isn't capable of have saying you know i'm just like everybody else because the film is constantly reminding us that he isn't and he is constantly trying to tamp down those parts of 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 what he's doing and we're reminded of that all the time because that's a main right. plot point right the right. plot hinges right. on his ability to to push out all the distractions so yeah and, and there's very little humor very little one liners you know i mean those those little quips you know just give me a couple quips lois just lane's funny just, 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 amy yeah, adams yeah, is I mean, very good she, yeah, yeah she actually oh man she does a great job in this again that was a great casting of you know of amy adams as well too that was a great casting job and, and, and isn't that the tease with these movies maybe is that like we keep coming back to these dcu movies and we keep thinking like well look Okay, so the last one didn't quite work out, right? It wasn't a, a, a 10 of 10 banger. It wasn't a five-star movie. But look, the next movie's already starting out with Amy Adams and Lawrence Fishburne and Henry Cavill. And I already know about these characters, so they're not going to have to spend time explaining to me who they are, right? And what they're doing. They're just going to drop right in, and it should be really great. And anyway, next week, we are going to be talking about the next movie, which is uh, Batman versus. The Supers Man, Dawns of Justice. Dawns. The two Dawns. Dawns of Justice. Dawns of Justice. The two Dawns. The, yeah. the, the ultimate edition. <laughs> so many Dawns. That's right. A... The director's cut. We're not the, not, not, not the, not, not, the director's not the, cut. Not the, right. not the theater version. With a whole though, extra, a whole extra Dawn in there for you. Uh, <laughs> Justice comes twice, right? Uh, so, so we're gonna have a good time with that next week. We'll be back on another Nerdendum. Maybe we'll actually eventually name this show because there's going to be MCU stuff. And I mean, we'll talk about Loki here. This is where this is the space that we're going to talk about Loki. And who knows with WandaVision ending soon. Tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. tomorrow. Maybe we'll talk yeah, a little yeah. bit about, uh, you know, Falcon, the Winter Soldier. But you can check us out here on our YouTube channel. Uh, you can check us out on this feed. I know we're going to cross feed this out. So I think that since this is a pilot, you're going to see this on our CBBS feed as well. We'll have it in there as a special app. And, you know, if you enjoy it, you know, stop back with us next week. Give us a rating, throw us a subscription, and we'll be talking about all this stuff. And remember, if you give us a rating less than five stars, I absolutely reserve the right to uh, handle that business by giving you the business. Don't. Uh... Thank, thank you for coming on, Michael. Michael, um, welcome to and, the nerd, um, the nerd psycho family. Come. It's nice to yeah, always add exactly, a new nerd know, psycho. He, he will be uh, back with uh, us th- next thank week. Thank you for inviting me. I'm to come on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We're gonna get I'll you. come on anytime. Hooray! None of us have anything to do. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that's the show this week. DP, you got any final uh, closing remarks? Nope. Um, uh, can't wait to do the next um, you know, movie watch. Um, I'm really excited. Uh, I've watched um, the Ultimate Edition about three or four times now and can't wait to watch it again. Awesome, awesome. And talk about it with you guys. Awesome, awesome, DP. And Michael, uh, let me ask you, do you bleed? <laughs> uh, just kidding. What do you, what do you last thought? Any, fi- any final thoughts you got for us? <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, I mean, uh, I'm, just, I'm just looking forward to it. You know, I'm always a big fan of every comic book, and you know, especially Batman. Anything that's Batman, I, I've seen, done, watched, heard, read. Um, you know, so I'm looking forward to this one. Awesome, awesome. And then, so we'll see you next week. And uh, I am Hitch, and for uh, DP and Michael, I want to say, uh, come back, or else we'll find you. See you later. NCFS is a production of Nerd Podcast. Nerdcyclopedia.